Hey everyone, welcome back. So at the end of June 2023, the Supreme Court of the United States decided that colleges and universities all across the nation could no longer use race when determining whether or not to admit students, except for through the personal lens of essays. Now, since then, I've been following a lot of discourse on this topic, listening to podcasts, reading articles, talking to friends, and just understanding how both sides are thinking about the issue. And as I started learning more and more, something felt really data science-y about this whole thing in more ways than one. And I couldn't, until now, pin down exactly what those things were. I realized the first of those things came through this sub-discussion where people were talking about how affirmative action policies are good because it's going to increase diversity in schools. Other people said there's no evidence they increase diversity in schools. Whether or not you agree with these sentiments, the one thing that I couldn't stop thinking about was that we don't, as a collective society, have any notion of how to measure diversity. If I give you a racial breakdown at one college or university versus a different college or university, how do you know which one's more diverse? How do you put a number on this thing we so nebulously call diversity? And that's the first thing I think would really help in this discussion is coming up with some kind of metric. The higher the metric is, the more diverse we can say this racial distribution of enrollment is, and the lower that number is, we can say the less diverse it is. But how do we do that? How do we go from some breakdown of enrollment by race and convert that to a single number that says how diverse that is? It seems that if we think about that a little bit, it seems like we would need some kind of reference distribution where we would say, this is the ideal racial breakdown of enrollment that you're targeting. Let's look at where you actually are at, and we can compare the distance or difference between those two distributions and come up with a number accordingly for how different they are. And that number would be, in some sense, a measure of diversity. The closer our current university's distribution is to that target reference distribution, the more diverse it is, and the further it is away, the less diverse it is. Now, in one way, it solves the problem, and we can use any number of data science metrics to come up with the distance between two distributions, like the KL divergence is a very popular one and works here because we are speaking the language of reference distributions and how far are you from that reference distribution. On one hand, it does kind of solve the problem because now we can have a numeric sliding scale about diversity, but on the other hand, it kind of just shifts the problem. Because I thought about this at first and I said, oh, that'll surely fix the problem as long as we can all agree on some reference distribution, but then I start thinking about, well, can we really all agree on a reference distribution? There's a lot of different ways you can come up with that reference. One very naive way would be for every racial group you have, we should have an equal enrollment. A uniform distribution is our reference distribution. It seems like fair at very, very first glance, but then you start thinking about someone coming and saying, that doesn't make any sense. We want our reference distribution to be the racial breakdown in the city that the university is located in because I want the enrollment at the university to be representative of the enrollment in the city, the local neighborhood the university is in. That seems reasonable too. But that still doesn't seem like it would be universally accepted. Somebody else could come and say that, you know what, no. Regardless of where your university is, I want the racial breakdown of enrollment at that university to be representative of the whole nation. Because we know that individual cities or individual states can have very different racial breakdowns than the entire country. And so a proponent of that strategy could say, I want the breakdown at the university to be preparing students for the type of racial breakdown they would see in the entire world, in the community at large, not just their local community. Now, none of these are objectively correct or objectively wrong, but at the least, I think it gets us one step closer to start saying that if you can pin down a reference distribution, what is your reference for diversity? Now, once we've either pinned that down or had a couple of options for that and report all of them, we can measure in terms of KL divergence, for example, the distance or difference of a current university's racial breakdown to where we think it should be. And that was thing number one for why this caught my data science-y gears in my brain turning. The other thing that I just couldn't stop thinking about when I was reading all this discourse was something feels really Bayesian about this. There seems like there's a lot of assumptions people are making and these assumptions are very different. And then I realized that assumption is really how much colleges and universities are using race in order to make their admissions decisions in the first place. And this comes up a lot when you look at discourse online because some people will say that 
Uh, they should not use race because it's going to lead to too much of an emphasis on race when you make admissions decisions. And then someone who's debating such a person might come and say, well, race is only one factor. There's all these other factors that go into admission. Now, nobody can conclusively say which of these people has the stronger argument because the admissions process at colleges and universities, at least in the United States, in my experience, still is very shrouded in mystery and confusion and students get accepted or denied from universities and they have no idea why, they have nothing they can point to to say, this is why I didn't get in or this is why I did get in. Now let's follow this train of thought where it takes us. The admissions decisions are very clouded in mystery and specifically the amount or the extent to which race is used is also a mystery. I don't think anyone can say, race is accounting for 15% or 85% of the admissions decision. We just don't know right now. So as we do in statistics, when we don't know something, we can turn to Bayesian statistics and we can create this visualization that's gonna help us understand where all the polarization on this topic is coming from. On the x-axis of our visualization, we're going to have the amount to which race plays an impact in college admissions decisions. On the very left, we have very low impact, not at all. Even if, you're, if you give it to colleges and universities, they don't even care, they don't look at it, not a factor at all. On the very right, you have purely race-based admissions where there's nothing else that's going into admissions. It's just what race you are that's gonna determine whether or not you get accepted. Both of these extremes are extremely unlikely, probably not the world we live in. We probably live somewhere in between, but we need these extremes in order to put into context how people are going to be feeling, how satisfied would they be if we did live in a world that was closer to the left end of the spectrum versus the right end of the spectrum. And that gets us into the next part of this visualization, which is the y-axis. The y-axis is going to be measuring how satisfied, how happy would somebody be if we were at different values, different worlds on the x-axis. And just to make a very simplifying assumption, the world is way more complex than this, where we're gonna assume there's two groups of people, one who is generally happier, whose y-axis value is generally higher if race is less used in the admissions process, and one whose y-axis value or satisfaction is higher if race is more used in the admissions process. This generally kind of supports the two points of view that are out there. Of course, people lie all across the spectrum on what they believe, but just in the simplifying world and to highlight the point we're trying to make, we'll assume there's these two groups who generally have this preference for how much race should be used in the admissions process. So now we take a turn from Bayesian statistics into psychology for a moment and think about, again, go back to the point where we don't even know which world we live in on the x-axis. The only people who know that are a very small number of admissions officers who are not willing, not overly willing to reveal their secrets in how admissions are done to the rest of us. So for the vast majority of us, we have no idea where we lie on the x-axis. Now a purely objective participant would say there's an equal probability that we lie anywhere on the x-axis. But when you turn to human psychology, we often assume the worst about the world and the worst really depends on where our moral compass lies. For example, those who want more emphasis on race in the admissions process might assume right now that colleges and universities don't use it enough, that might be their fear, and by overruling this affirmative action as just happened, they might sink further into that fear and say that now they're not gonna be able to use it even as much as they did before, which I still don't think was enough. I think we live in a world that's at the very left of the spectrum. Now, on the other hand, you have those folks who would like race to be used less in the admissions process. And their fear might be that if you do give this information to colleges and universities, they'll just use it way too much. That's their biggest fear. And so their most probable world that we live in is going to be the one that's furthest on the right, where colleges and universities are leaning heavily into race if given the opportunity. Now, what's common about whether you believe we live on the world on the left or you believe we live on the world on the right, that's exactly the places where the gap in satisfaction between these two groups is at one of the highest values it could be of anywhere on this plot. For example, if somebody came out and exactly told you the formula for how race is done in the admissions process, and we have objectively believed that we are actually in the middle of this plot, then the satisfaction gap isn't actually that big. There will still be people who think that's too much or too little, but it's nowhere near as wide as when we have no insight into the process and we have polarized ourselves into these two extremes, 
those who believe it's used too much and those who believe it's used too little, leading to one of the biggest gaps in satisfaction that we could have on this plot, leading to all the polarization that we actually see in this world. So the other thing I would say is that I don't think it's gonna be the case that we're ever gonna have full transparency into the emissions process. Like here's a formula where you can plug in your race and your GPA and your extracurriculars and it's gonna give you a probability that you get admitted. I don't think we're gonna be in such a world and maybe we don't wanna be because then students are just going to play this game where they're prioritizing for certain metrics. Um, but I think a little bit more insight into the admissions process, especially around how race is used and the instances in which it's used might at least shed some light there will still be polarization in that world don't get me wrong but it may not be as bad as it is right now so let me know if you agree or disagree with these sentiments on kind of a data sciencey take on the affirmative action ruling and just using race in admissions in general if you like this video please like and subscribe for more videos just like this any comments any discussion very welcome especially for this video in the section below and i will see you all next time.